Hey there, Ryan Kingsline, founder of URC here. What is NanoMesh? That's what I really want to talk to you about in this video. Help explain what NanoMesh is, how it fits into the whole system, and everything like that. Now, what you're seeing in front of you right now is basically NanoMesh, a ton of NanoMesh. In its at the heart, NanoMesh is very simply a particle system inside of ZBrush. It's a particle system that uses geometry. It uses geometry to actually sprout the particles themselves. And another way you can look at it, just so you have a sense of how ZBrush thinks about these things, it's Pixelogic's way of collapsing the plane field. And by that, I mean what we as sculptors work with. Let's do this in red it's very light right there. What we in ZBrush as sculptors work with is we work with polygons. Okay, now in the beginning, early days, there was this debate between uh, texture mapping with UVs and poly painting. So at that point, Oferlon made a decision. He wanted polygons to be the basis of everything so that he could keep the code very efficient. He didn't want to involve UVs and then from there uh, go out to a texture map that would then get applied back via rendering to wherever those polygons are or actually go back to the UVs and then it would go to poly. It's a whole bunch of ex excessive overhead that he didn't want to get involved in. So what he did with poly painting, what he did with poly painting is he made polys also equal texture. Each polygon was essentially a pixel. So not just a texture, another way to say that is each polygon equals a pixel. And then we saw insert multi-mesh brushes come along. So a polygon equals a pixel, but it also equals a model. So within a polygon you can get a model that then is made up of polygons and the whole thing is able to kind of cycle around and around and around. It's a very efficient way of working. You have one thing that we deal with. We deal with polygons. From those polygons we can turn them into textures. We can turn it into entire full models. And then we can turn those full models back into polygons and do other things with it such as array mesh. So Let's get in and see a little bit more about NanoMesh and how I used it in this example. So if I just kind of rotate this around, you'll see it starts to move. It's full 3D, including that background. See that background in there? The way this background was created is actually going to be probably the fastest way for you to get in and see what this is all about. So I'm just going to come in and select a plane, let's say a polyplane 3D. I'm going to turn frame on, and that's about how many um, flowers there were there. I need to convert this to a poly mesh because that's a primitive. And then I go into the Z modeler brush. So I've already got it selected, and I actually have a couple of other Z modelers down here. So let me just show you this real quick Nano tube. Now we hover over a face, a polygon face, and we say insert nano mesh, and we say all polygons and then we just drag something out and immediately come into nano mesh. Now don't worry about the placement, don't worry, did you get it right? All of that's going to get adjusted. You just need to put something into play. You just need something to be sitting there. So I'm going to set the size to 1 and we're going to remove the rotation and we're going to set it to fit. That way it's fitting within that polygonal space. So by that I mean, let me just take size and take it down a notch. You see that now there's a little bit of space between the tubing that I'm using and the polygon face. But you can see quite clearly one polygon, while it can also equal a pixel, can also equal a model. Now I'm going to set this back to one and then we've got a couple of alignment things we can do. We can say align to normal. Now in a simple model like this, there's not a lot 
that really changes. And I mean, you basically only have a couple. But this just gives you a, a little bit of an insight into how it works. You can rotate if you want. So we could rotate that at 45 degrees, right? And then just increase the side. We could quite literally do that. You could also offset it, and you could randomize that offset. So things start to go nuts. You can Y offset it, and X offset it, and then you randomize that as well. You could put some rotation in there so that these things rotate around, and then you could randomize the rotation. And so now suddenly, it's a totally different thing that's happening here. It's starting to seem like a ground plane, right? So not just tubing, but something else. This could be totally something else. We can adjust our size back. We can make it real small. And then we can come in here and say random distribution. And now instead of it being one polygon face for one model, basically a one-to-one -one relationship, random distribution means that some polygon faces are going to get three, four, five, six, and some are going to get zero. Watch that. So now they're starting to stack up. And is that starting to look like a ground plane? Now this is a special custom material I have. So why don't I switch over to a matcap gray for you. You can get to see a little sense of what else is possible here. You can increase the height, increase the length, the width. You can vary this quite dramatically for each one of these things. And now you've got something else entirely, something for an environment artist perhaps. But either way, you're looking at, in the simplest terms, a particle system that's using geometry as its source. We've got a bunch of options for controlling that and for making that happen uh, in terms of its placement and arrangement on there. But once we're ready, we just come in and say, come down to uh, inventory, we say one to mesh and it converts this entire thing into geometry including that polygonal plane in there which is buried <laughs> nearly impossible to see I'm pressing control shift and trying to kinda isolate various things so there we go let me just make sure yep. control shift click and drag and then I come down to uh, well it's up sorry to geometry Modify topology, and I'll say just delete hidden, just get rid of that plane. And there you go. And now it's fully sculptable. So we could come in with a move brush, or we could come in with a smooth brush, and we start to kind of modify this. But it's all geometry. Come back in and inflate it. Because these are little, these are very simple. What I inserted was, in the simplest terms possible, it was just a long polygon cube. That's it. No extra anything. So you can inflate it. It will always come back to this tubular fashion. Another way that we can use it is the way in which we've got for our model here. So let's go back and find out which one it is. Because there's so many of them. It's obviously the one with 40. <laughs> it's the one with a lot. And let's walk through the subtools a little bit. Now, I use a very specific way to kind of make this selection, to, to kind of choose what my source is going to be, the source that generates the polygons, right? In the other example, or the particles, in the other example, we just had a plane that just drew these things in. But I like to go in and kind of mix things up. So I had Decimation Master, and I had a whole bunch of these run. Um, let me see if I can find any other, but I tend to decimate them at different levels. So this is a higher level than what you saw. And then that was just the face of something. And then very, lot higher, lot higher. I choose these because these are different density levels. So what they do is they allow me in terms of my particle generation to say, hey, I want really fine particles. This way I don't have to go in and smooth them or adjust their size. I just go through this this loop process, like a program. I make a series of sources, okay, and then I perform a series of um, uh, particle generations. Right, and then I just go through and I have a retention phase and I decide which ones am I actually going to keep. 
right? And then once I've done that, then I might go through and that one that I keep or a couple of them that I keep might become sources again and then I'll generate particles from that and I'll decide which ones. This loops, this 100% loops, it's a process. And uh, it's really cool. I'm, I have several words for it. It's parametric sculpting. It's also handcrafted generative artwork. Handcrafted degenerative artwork, however you want to call it. Now, in my case here, we can see several different types of particles. So there's this guy right here, which is rendered with um, some transparency. And this is basically just a torus. It's a single plane torus. And then you can see a flower in here. And then you can see there's these little polygon faces. And there's also some cubes. And then there's also these little guys, cubes and all of that, that kind of fit in there. And, and there's a ton of different things. And then I also like to throw in a little bit of messy fiber. So I'll have one of those guys uh, generate fibers. Um, so I go through a process of taking one of these models and applying nano mesh to them. So the nano mesh that I use is going to, I didn't save any of those brushes for it, but they just use these models. So I can quickly do this by just selecting one of these models and looking at it straight on because the way you look at it right now is going to affect how it draws onto the model. And I say, create insert mesh. Yeah, do a new. And then with that insert mesh brush created, I say, create nano mesh. Right? And then if I want to save it, I click and I click save as, and I'll save it in my default directory or wherever I want. Now I have a model, so I can go back to this one. And I can say hover over face, insert nano mesh, all polygons. And now I have a whole bunch of flowers on her face. And this is this is inspired by my daughter Aisha, who's uh, just the girliest girl there is. It's just so awesome. I was a family of all boys. So um, it's nice to have a little girl. Uh, we can adjust the height, the width, just to add a little bit of variation in there, right? And in fact, we could set some of these higher too. And uh, let's set, let's set two, two, and let's set this at, yeah, there we go. And we've got a little bit of variation happening. Now we don't need this rotation. You can put it in or not; doesn't matter. The Y rotation can sometimes, if you just hit it to one. That gives you a chance to do some randomizing of it. And so that you don't want a lot in X. Just one and then a little bit. Just gives you a chance to rotate things. But you don't want those flowers to turn around and face the inside, because then you got to adjust them. Okay, You can offset this so it starts to be like an explosion of flowers. You know? Like, let's back out of that. Do you see how that happens? It's just beautiful, right? So let's come back into that material. This is just a custom material I made for this um, that really helps me get a sense of how pretty it can be. So you can Y offset that and then establish some variance there as well. Now for the ease of me explaining this, I'm not going to have any offset because then you'll start wondering where this is, where that is, and things of that nature. I'm also going to switch back to matcap gray just so it's easier for me to explain. And then I put random distribution because I don't want those to be everywhere. I want to build like a whole bunch of them. And my process, even though there is an index for nano mesh, I didn't really use it. And I, you know, use it, but I like to have like full control over things. So I was going through sub tools to say, hey, here's the one that has this, and here's the one that has that. So I'm going to duplicate this, come down to this one, go to nano mesh, and I'm going to convert this to pure geometry. No more nano mesh. So there, I'm going to just try to isolate this one. Control, click and drag, and then just delete hidden. This way I have a subtool that's just pure flower. So I'll name this flowers medium. I don't usually name things when I do it. I'm an artist, damn it. Not a organizing assistant to an artist. I am just trying to survive in a creative world. Yeah. Now, once you've got this, there's a couple of things that you can do, but you, you have a particle, 
system. You have flowers that have literally been generated off the face of this model. And that's what all of this other stuff is. So if we were just to go in here, it's all these flowers are, and it's all these little bricks and brick or bracks are, and the little toruses, just little pieces of that. Now, what I've done to really make this kind of a special image is instead of going into Photoshop or anywhere else, I like to stay inside a ZBrush and do as much as possible just because it's my creative home. So I come into BPR filters, I do a whole bunch of things, specifically that paint. I love that. And then BPR. But there's like, you know, eight filters on that thing. A lot. So there's a lot of stuff processing as, long, as well as some transparency. So nano mesh, what is it? It's a particle system that allows you to instance geometry of any kind, of any kind that you can do along an organized format, such as we did initially with the tubing, or with, along a random format, as we're doing right now. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Get out there, create some handcrafted generative artwork. Would love to see that. Post it if you got a class at UArts. You would love to see it there. Check out the CERT program and learn more about what I'm doing at RyanKingsline.com. Take care of yourselves. Happy ZBrushing.